So I just broke open the box on my $41 winch. Obviously it comes with a winch. It has a hook, a pulley, a roller fair lead, nuts and bolts, a mounting bracket, and the wiring. I didn't know it was going to come with the wiring. I am pleasantly surprised. Right here with the John Deere and I'm working on the front bumper. I've got some 3 inch angle iron. It's going to be good and stout. Now the dilemma is the hood hits the winch, but I don't think I care. I don't want the bumper sticking out a quarter mile and I do want the hood to open. So I'm going to compromise. I'm going to let the hood touch the winch. If you need to work on the engine, the hood will come off. If you need to check the oil, change the oil, if you need to change the air filter, I can get in there. And again, if you need to work on the engine, want to take the hood off, hood's out of the way. And then the winch, the bumper's not sticking out too far. It's right now sticking out about, it's less than 12 inches from the front of the hood. I can live with that. The Poulon, if you remember, it's way out about 16 inches. I'll show you. 16. It's about 18, counting this little spike. If we go down to the bottom of the hood, it sticks out oh, about 13 inches. I like that. It's good for hauling stuff, but on the John Deere, I think I'm going to keep it in good and tight, just like you see it. Step next, I'm going to cut this angle iron off about here, make two pieces that are the same, drill some holes, bolt that on, and I'm going to weld a 3-inch angle iron across the front to bolt the bumper to. So I've got the hood off. I just went down and straightened out the muffler guard so the grass don't catch on fire. I had to take a bracket off of this side. It is now ready to start putting the angle iron on. One bad thing about this bumper, there's not going to be room for my LEDs. This side I can make something work, but on the other side, the winch motor's in the way. So no LEDs on the bumper, unless we can come up with something, maybe under the bumper, stuck underneath. Or we could re maybe possibly replace the ones in the grill with these. We'll see. Winch first, LEDs, TBA, to be announced. So I just cut out a frame extender for this side and a frame extender for this side. I've drilled three bolts in it. In the frame, there's two existing bolt holes. I just drilled this bolt hole. So with these two pieces temporarily bolted on, I need a 13-inch piece of angle iron from here to here. It just so happens I've got a homemade hitch. This was on my Ford Taurus. Sold the car, kept the hitch. I'm going to take 13 inches out of this piece. Had it on the tractor for a while, using it as a plow. I made a ditch to the tiny house for putting electrical in, and the tractor was too powerful and bent it. So we're going to cut out that 13-inch piece here, and that's going to finish up our bracket. And there's the center section cut, sitting in place, ready to be welded. We're getting there. The welding process has started on the deer. I'm going to take it off now, flip whatever weld underneath, weld down the front, paint it up and put it back on. So now the bumper bracket is all welded up. Even got the autograph on there. I just welded on my last two brackets. That's where the bumper bolts on. Up next, I'm going to clean it up and paint it. Flat black. The bumper bracket has now been primed. Up next, I'm going to slap on some flat black. The bumper bracket is now on. All the bolts are tight. There are six bolts. I've got some nuts and bolts now standing by to get the bumper put on. The bumper is next. And in this top center hole, I'm going to do a nice grade 8 bolt. With a lock nut. The bumper is now mounted. It's all five bolts are tight. It's time for the 160 pound man test. I think it holds me. And now for the fun part, time to put the winch on.
bumper, the winch, everything's on. Now we'll get the hood back on. And I'm not going to wear it tonight. That'll be a tomorrow or the next day or the next day. I've got to plug the headlights back in. I'm going to call it a day. And I think that turned out great. Maybe tomorrow we'll test it. Here's the deer's front bumper and winch out in the daylight. And if you're wondering about the Craftsman, I've not forgot it. It's sitting right there. Same place you saw it last time, but it is next on the list. I just hit the front tires and wheels with a pressure washer. I believe it's time for some yellow. John Deere yellow. That's next. And now the homemade pontoon boat is being used as a table. I've got the wheel cleaned up. It's ready to be yellow. Wheel number one is yellow and wheel number two is yellow. This one's still drying. I'm going to flip over. We'll do the back. We'll put them back on. This will be done. And so now both wheels have been painted front and back. And I've got some slime to go in this one. That one has a tube. It's not leaking. This one needs a tube. So we're going to put a little slime in there. Now, if you're wondering what's the point of the slime, I've got the beads cleaned up really good and it still leaks. I put some soapy water on there and it's leaking out of the sidewalls. They're a little bit dry rotted. And I doubt this video will get as many views as when I put foam in the front tire on the zero turn or when I put mortar mix in the front tire on the zero turn. I'll leave a link to those videos. And now the wheels, which are now yellow, are back on the mower. So I just came back from the store. I have some flat black. I have some gloss golden sunset. I got my 916s. I got some new welding rods. I got the drill ready. I think what's going to happen next, I'm going to take this bracket off. So it's going to be golden gloss sunset. Let's see how that looks. So I just did some more welding on the bracket. This was the old rods from yesterday. This was the new rods from today. I think those were old. I like that a lot better. On this side, I took the grinder and cleaned it up a little bit. I even put in there where that gap was a little triangle tab and a little triangle tab. That's the tab I cut up to make the 45 in the first place. So it's back home. Up next, I'm going to put a little primer on. Then we're going to put the yellow on. Yellow on standby. The bracket is now primered. And while you were not looking, the front lift kit became black on both sides. Here's a shot of the Moto Mo. It's just sitting here, but if we look on the other side, there's a chrome stack. I don't know if that'll ever happen, but it sure does look good on there. And speaking of stacks, here's a cold start. I'm right here with the deer and the winch and the wiring and I've got no handlebar on the deer this is made to go on handlebars I don't have the blade adjustment height lever I got nowhere to put it so I'm coming up with a new solution I've got this L bracket I think I'll take it apart and screw this here and then mount it right about there somewhere in that ballpark up out of the water but easy to reach if it was on the Poulon we could have mounted it right here on this pipe. 
that I don't have this lever on the deer. The deer has, the deer had this for its deck height adjustment, but the pipe is too thin. And B, this is now my shifter, and C, the wires are too short to reach back this far. So I want to mount it probably here and run the wires through that hole. That's what I'm thinking. So I took the switch apart. There's the internals. That looks good. And the back cover, I took off all of the bolts, the hardware that holds it on the handlebars. And then on this bracket, I cut the bracket off and drilled a new hole. Now, I'll drill two holes here, get me two bolts, and that guy's going to be ready to mount. And I may put bolts in these holes just to keep the mud, the dust, the dirt out. So my bracket's all bolted together. These two bolts hold the bracket on. These four bolts keep the dirt, the water, the mud, whatever out. It's time to now bolt it onto the tractor. I'm going to want it right about there. And if we look behind the firewall, plenty of room, nothing in the way. And so now the winch wiring is all done. I kind of want to get me some bigger black zip ties. The wires are hooked to the battery. The buttons are mounted. Might be time for a little winch test. So somehow you pull out this knob, turn it, then you can free spool. Supposedly. There it is. Hooked right on. And when you plug that back in, we're going to push the reel it in button. Reels it right in. Had to move the box of screws out of the way, and let's go back down. So it's Friday afternoon. It's been raining all day long. That should be a good mud hole. I want to go try out the winch. It'll be a good time to do it with all this rain. And don't worry, I've got a raincoat. And it's getting dark, but you should still be able to see me. So here's the mud hole looking better than ever. I think I'll just back off right here in the middle. Surely we can't make it across. And then we can use the winch. There's got to be a tree somewhere over here we can use. Okay, I've got you over here under the umbrella. I'm going to back off in the hole. We'll see what happens. If all goes to plan, we'll get stuck. Okay, the cable is now hooked to a rotten limb. We'll either pull the rotten limb out of the woods or the mower out of the hole.
that also got my winch cable straightened back out. I like that. It's almost like new again. Winch one, mud hole zero. This means you've watched to the end of the video and I really appreciate that. If you want to do me a favor, hit that share button. Leave me a comment. I love comments. And thanks so much for watching.